Hello friends, welcome back. Today we will be learning something very cool that is how to automatically create and email pay slips using Excel macros. In one of my previous tutorials, I had explained similar concept using Google Sheets. In today's tutorial, I will be showing the same thing using Excel macros. So without wasting any time, let's begin with a demo first. So this is my Excel spreadsheet and you could see in this tab, like I have some data with the employee details. These are all random data which I have created for this example. So I'll just give you a quick demo. When I click on this button over here, I clicked here. You could see something is happening in the background. Once it is completed, you'll get this message as done. So it is done now. Now two things have happened in the background. The first thing is like the salary slips are created in PDF format in the location which I have mentioned in the VBA code. So let me first show you those salary slips. Like these are the salary slips which have just been created. You could see the timestamp 1828 here. It is 1829. So here is the place where the pay slips have been generated and if i go into my outlook this is my outlook and if i see my sent items so the emails have been already sent so if i just open one of these so this is the content like please find the pay slip for the month and if you see the timestamp again the timestamp is you could see 1829 so just when i clicked on this button the pay slips got automatically created and also sent to the email ids which were mentioned in this column d so you found the demo interesting. So now let's dive in to the coding part of it. Just before beginning with the coding part, I would like to show you one of the salary slips so that you'll be able to easily correlate. So let me open one of the salary slips. I just open it over here. It is in PDF format. And you could see like this is the salary slip which was generated and sent over an email. Like it has all the details and all these details have been picked up from the data sheet which is available over here so now uh, we can discuss about how this is actually being configured with the vba uh, so now comes the interesting part and once again i'll show you this salary slip like you could see like this uh, salary slip has uh, the com company name and these details so these details i have placed it in this template sheet so if you come over here here is the place where you'll be mentioning the name of your company and these are the fields which uh, I need it in this salary slip. So whatever fields which you need, like you could have placeholder for these. The important part is if you see the cells which are towards the right of these fields, for example, employee ID, this is the label and this, the actual value, I have kept it as blank. Similarly, like all the fields on the right hand side, like these are the placeholders. Like when the script would be running, the data from these rows would be getting populated into these cells and then from these cells, the salary slip would be getting generated. So all in all, this template is very important and it is very easy to create this template. I leave it up to you. Like you have to just uh, create these rows and columns. What I have done is like uh, in the view, I have uh, removed the grid line so that you won't see any grid lines. Uh, you all can add some colors if you want. You could make certain text as bold. So it is up to you. Like it is very easy Like uh, create a simple template and make sure you have the labels and the fields towards the right of the labels are blank because they would be getting populated at the runtime so what i'll do i will uh, delete these fields as well so like there are no values in here all the values would be picked up at the runtime when the script would be executing so the prerequisite is like you have to create this kind of a template and now i'll show you the code works so this is the code you have to go to the developer then visual basic and i have already written the code uh, it is very simple i'll explain you and then maybe like you could try it uh, by yourself so uh, at the top like i had created this object for output because we not we we, we need to send those pay slips as well as we are creating we are then sending it over an email using outlook so i've created an object of outlook uh, this is very important the folder path because where you need your pay slips to get saved so here i have mentioned uh, the uh, the location of my system so whatever is the location in your system just populate the folder path with that folder location the next line of code now what i'll do is i'll start executing the script in debugging mode so that it would be very easier for you all to correlate so for debugging i have to place a breakpoint so on this gray border just do a single click this kind of a red dot will appear and which means the script will halt at this point. So to start the execution, I click on this run button. You see the script has stopped over here. Now if I hover my mouse over here, the STR employee ID, the value is A1111. 
So if you would see like this value is coming from the sheet which is named as data and if you see the value of the cell B2, the value is A1111 and in the code, this is the place from where this variable is getting populated. So it is referring to the data sheet and the cell is B2. So now this value is A1111. I have initialized the row number as 2 because this is the row number from where we, are, we have our data. Like the first row is the headers. From row number 2, we have our data. The next line of code, this while loop, I'll just explain you in a while. But for now, I'll skip that. And now I'll continue deb uh, debugging the script. For that, I'll use the function key F8. So now it is at this line. If I do another F8, so this line of code has been executed, which says, go to the template sheet, range is C9 and populate it with the value of employee ID, which is A1111. So if we go to the template sheet, this is the template sheet and see over here, this is the cell C9 and it has now been populated with the employee ID A1111, which means the data which has been, which is available over here is now being populated here. Similarly, we have other feeds which will get populated one by one. I'll show you another one. So the next is the employee name. If I do F8, the employee name is now John Roberts. John Roberts is coming from row number two, cell C. So C2, the value of C2 is John Roberts. In the script, if you would see this variable str employee name is referring to column C and in row number and in row number we had initialized with two. So whatever is the value in C2 is getting populated in employee name. And when the next line of code is getting executed, the same will be appearing in the template sheet to the right of employee name. You could see the name has been populated. So similarly, all the other fields will get populated. So for now, what I'll do, I'll just scroll down. And now I will place a breakpoint at this line and I once again click on this green button and now if I see my template sheet like whatever was the data from row number two is now available over here in all these cells. So the lines of code which got executed are these like we are fetching the data from the data sheet. This is the data sheet right now we are at row number two. So we are fetching the data from the data sheet at row number two and populating the template like this. So at this point, this payslip is now ready for employee ID A1111 in this Excel sheet. And now we want to somehow export it and then send it over an email as an attachment. So how do we do that? So once again, we go back to our code and now at this line, which is like highlighted, here we need the file path so i'm just pressing f8 so that the file path is populated so the file path is like a combination of the folder path if you remember we had initialized the folder with this path over here and now we are appending the folder path with the str employee id so that it would be a unique name so str employee id in our case is a1111 so the file which will get created will have this name at this folder location. The file name would be A1111 and the format would be PDF. So this is the file path. And now comes the most important part where we would be actually exporting it. Up till now, we have just made the things ready. The file is not yet exported. So first I'll show you this location. So D Excel automation paste slip. So this is my location D Excel automation paste steps, which is right now empty. But now when I execute the next line, I, I do a F8, something is happening. If I come over here, this file has been generated. And if you want to see it, you could use a PDF uh, software or you could use something like this, which I'm using. I'm using the Chrome browser and you could see the template sheet, which was available in the Excel has now been exported as a PDF file 
over here at this location. So what was the line of code which did this job? This is the line of code. So the sheet like this workbook dot sheets, the whichever sheet which we want to export in our case, we wanted the template sheet. So whatever is the name of the sheet, we have to mention it over here dot export as fixed format space. The first parameter is Excel type PDF because we want the file to be saved as a PDF. So we are mentioning it as Excel type PDF. And then we have to provide the location where you want the PDF to be saved. That's it. That is very simple. Only one thing you need to take care is if you come to the template sheet, like make sure like uh, your data within this table, like uh, it does not go beyond, like it is not very wide. Else it may happen like some part of the data will come in the next page of the PDF, which will not look good. So just make sure like you make a pretty concise template so that everything fits in just one page as it is in my case like the entire salary slip is available in one page so at this point the salary slip is now ready in the pdf format next step is we need to send it over an email so the code for it goes like this so here you could see the line which is highlighted call send pay slip so i've created one function send pay slip with three parameters this is the email id on which i need to send this is the file path like which file i want to attach and this another parameter I have passed as like uh, which is the month for this specific salary slip. So let's continue debugging and actually see what happens within this send pay slip function. So when I uh, press F8, I will actually move into the function and I could see uh, I can show you the parameter values. The email ID is this. This is the file path and this is the month. The email ID and the month are coming from our data sheet. So this is the data sheet. If you'd see here, we have the column for email ID here. We have the pay month. So these have like, these are being read from the data sheet and now passed as parameters over here. And now if we come down over here, this is the code, which is actually sending the email and attaching the file, which is mentioned over here into the email. So if I continue my debugging, uh, I'll just ignore these two steps right now. Uh, this is like, I'll tell you like why, why those uh, lines of code are here. But the most important thing is like whenever we have to send an email, we have to create this kind of an object. You could give any name of the object and use the object which we had created earlier. So if I just come over here, obj outlook. So this is the same name obj outlook dot create item o mail item. This should remain as is. And if we continue uh, with this, uh, year dot two, we have to mention the email ID. Uh, next is the subject. Subject says pay slip. And since we have the month over here, you could like uh, update it like a pay slip for the month and then provide the month like this so that it will appear in the subject line. Next is dot body. So uh, this text will appear in the body of the email. Please find the pay slip for the month, whatever is the month attached. And if you see, I'm appending this line with the signature variable. So the entire body along with the signature will appear in that email. And next part is very important dot attachments. So dot attachments dot add and provide the path of the file, which needs to be attached. And the next is dot send. So let me continue my debugging. And at this point, the send is executed. And if everything is fine, let me go to my outlook and here you could see it has appeared in the sent item if i just open this email you could see the subject line pay slip for the month of february 2023 and uh, please find the pay slip for the month uh, february 2023 attached and the signature so this entire email has been configured and sent to the email id which was mentioned in the data sheet so this is how we can do it now, if I continue my debugging, if you'd see now my execution goes to this line, which is incrementing my row. So now this row number has changed from two to three. And once again, I'm using my earlier STR employee ID. And when I execute this line, now it has changed. So from row number two, it has now moved to row number three. So at this point, the value of employee ID is A1112. You could see it over here because right now it is reading from row number 
three. And you could see the syntax when I had skipped this line of code, I told you, I'll explain you in a while. So this while loop will continue for all the rows until it reaches the last row. So right now the row number is three. It will continue until row number 11. And then at one point it will increment the row number and it will find a blank. So if you'd see my while loop, the condition which I have imposed over here, why str employee ID is not blank. So if there is some data, it will continue and it will create the salary slips and send it. But once it completes, like once it finds a blank row, the execution will get completed. It will get stopped. So make sure there are no blank rows in between. You should have your data uh, in a proper sequence. And that was the reason I had used this uh, while loop. So what I'll do is like, I'll just remove all the breakpoints. I have removed it. And once again, I click on this green button. So in the background, the execution is happening. It has completed. It was very quick. If I go into the folder where I'm expecting my payslips, you could see all the payslips have been generated. If I go into my Outlook, the emails are being sent. So let me just refresh it. You could see those are increasing. And here, all the emails have been successfully sent. So this is how we can automate the entire procedure of creating and sending salary slips. So this code, which I have written over here, do not worry. It is very simple and I'll be putting it on the blog. I'll show you the blog right away and then you could just refer it and create your own solution. So here is the blog where the entire solution is available automation and agile.com within this menu, go to the last option, read and send payslips and here you go. This is the entire code. Hope you found this tutorial helpful and interesting. If you like my videos, I would request you to please subscribe to my channel so that you'd be updated with the latest videos I would be uploading. Guys, thanks for joining. I'll see you soon.